Hey, what's going on everyone? It is David Palmer and Leo King and welcome to Deep Astrology, your weekly astrology forecast for the week of January 21st through the 27th of 2020. Thanks so much for being here and thanks for being a part of HighVibe.TV. Thank you so much for being a part of HighVibe.TV to bring you this show full and exclusive in its form. Make sure that you join HighVibe.TV. If you're watching this on YouTube, of course, the first part of this show is always the full portion of it, and then it goes to just audio when we go deep into the charts. Now, if you never watched the show before, this is where we're gonna give you the weekly astrology forecast, and of course, we're gonna do it by channeling the astrology to you, what's going on this week, and then we're gonna go deep into those charts, which are brought to you by Astro Gold, which you can get on iOS, Android, or any of the Mac devices out there. But if you're on PC, make sure that you check out Solar Fire. And this show is sponsored by the W Bros. Check out the wbros.com to get this exclusive line of Zodiac jewelry rings. I'm wearing my sterling silver Leo ring like always. And of course, they have awesome necklace options for your Zodiac signs. You can get it in rose gold, you can get it in sterling silver, and you can get it in gold. Make sure that you check it out and use my discount code LK10. Pretty awesome because 10% of the proceeds go to help fight anxiety and depression. And that's a big one for me, especially the anxiety part. Well, what a week do we have to talk about here. It is the Chinese New Year, new moon in Aquarius week. And you know, we are starting a whole new cycle in the Chinese New Year, which is a metal rat we are coming into. Remember, we are leaving this pig energy, which is, you know, not bad. I mean, some people go, oh, it's like the end of the zodiac of the Chinese, so it kind of is, uh. But you know what, the pig is, sure, it got last in the race, but the pig that we're leaving is spiritual in a sense that sometimes when we, we kind of do, you know, fall behind, but enjoy life and enjoy the journey, that we're able to see so much. But the rat is much different. And this is a very different time because we're in a new decade, number one. We also have finished the Saturn-Pluto conjunction. And even though we're gonna see Saturn and Pluto in the same sign here for most of 2020, you know, there is this whole entire new world we are rebuilding and this new moon is gonna set it off more than ever. Because we have gone through so much Capricorn to the beginnings of this time, right? I mean, just starting off the new year, we went right into having a Christmas solar eclipse in Capricorn with Jupiter. And then, of course, the lunar eclipse on the 10th. And then Mercury, Saturn, Pluto, and Ceres, and the Sun, all conjunct on that 12th, which was intense. So then we had to go through the Sun in Capricorn up till... The 20th, which it finally came into Aquarius to liberate us and to have us start to see the future. It's been heavy energy and we are never again for another 28 years going to have the Sun and Saturn and Capricorn together. So you just went through 2018, 2019 and the beginning here of 2020 with the Sun and Capricorn and Saturn and Capricorn and that is done. So this new moon this week in Aquarius, this Aquarius Sun is definitely bringing a lighter load but you have to remember that there's still a heavy caboose behind all this. That's Saturn, Pluto, Jupiter, South Node, and Capricorn. But this is a weird week because yes, it's a new moon. Yes, we're coming into a rat, which is very smart, cunning, and very directional as far as taking action in life. You have to remember that because the rat takes direction. It's very smart, it's witty, and it moves in the direction it wants. You know, rats are fearless, believe it or not. Why do you think you hear them running and scurrying all over the place? It's not like they're you know, running away or like a, like opossums that are like screaming on your, you know, back door, <laughs> you know, like no rats go into wherever they want to go. And so this is going to be a year with this, especially 2020 time. And especially with all this Capricorn energy about making your mark, setting your precedence on the planet. But let's go back to the Western astrology here. This new moon in Aquarius is coming at a very weird week because before we get to that new moon on Friday, the 24th, which by the way, if you're in the LA or Orange County area, we are doing spiritual dance music here. Uh, it's going to be a live show. So tickets are available right now for $20 at highvibe.tv. You can click on SDM events or tickets. I think I made it. So you can join us live here and have an awesome time for the new moon ceremony and party that we throw here at High Vibe. So we'd love to have you here in the studio for that. But it's on Friday. So what does that mean? A dark moon, and this dark moon is going to be with Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter in the south node. So, 
All the energy we've just gone through that's been extremely heavy coming into this year, we're going to have a dark moon. If you don't know what that is, that's a balsamic phase of the moon. It's the last 30 degrees between the moon when it reaches to the sun. It's where we see the moon right before the sun comes up in the morning, so not many people see it, right? And it's very, very hard to see. So, you know, when it's a waning moon, so this is a time for us right now where we are preparing. But we also cannot have massive fears because this is where fears come up. But we also see tons of endings during this time. And because we're also ending that Chinese zodiac of a 12 year cycle, we just went through a Saturn Pluto cycle, which has brought us to a place of whether you want to call that like a tower card and like tarot version of it. Like we all have this just massive shift that has been forced upon us in our life to take a new action, to take some sort of new building block of what we are going to do now to progress forward and make our lives better because Capricorn is a great sign for understanding goals and achievements, but it can always leave us tired. It can leave us feeling drained. It could leave us feeling like we've been in a monotonous energy. It could make us feel sometimes even extremely with like a lot of melancholy. So this Aquarian energy is important for us to liberate. But while this dark moon's happening, is when the sun's gonna square Uranus. Now there's a lot more to talk about in the astrology, of course, but I just wanna cover all the bases first. So the sun square Uranus is a big deal because all the planets are direct, remember. So not only is it a Chinese New Year of the rat, it's all the planets direct, and it's the sun in Aquarius squaring Uranus. So the sun in Aquarius is at its detriment, right? It's not at its favorite place because, you know, it's not easy being, I guess you could say, like a, a sun that's so bright and defining itself through who it is and what it wants to express itself as. You know, Aquarius is about interconnection and people and having to look and help and, and, and look at how everybody fits in the puzzle where the sun's very focused on its own, you know, self-love in order to keep the heat going. But this square to Uranus is weird because the sun already is in detriment. Now it's squaring over to Uranus, which is the opposite you know, I guess you could say energy of the sun. So this is um, bringing a lot of weird shifting in life. People are like, I am ready to bail out of situations I don't feel good in. I'm out, I'm done. Because Uranus and Taurus is all about us moving forward into new situations about how are we gonna feel better and we have to figure out complex problems that maybe aren't so complex. Maybe the only complex problem is you not taking action to move forward into something better and new. So this is a very important time for us because it's like, it could seem like the problems are mounting on us because with that caboose behind us of Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter, right? That's the heaviest energy that could ever last, especially with the South Node. You know, it's, it's heavy. It's like, ugh. But instead of you thinking like, I use this analogy to Craig today. I'm like, you know, a lot of the energy for me, it kind of felt like when I was in high school and I didn't do my homework for three weeks. And then like the teacher finally was like, yo, like the, the, the finals here, the midterms here, and you didn't do all your homework, like you're gonna fail this class. And then you kind of like, what I did was I started ditching school. Now I'm not promoting that, but I'm just being real. And then, it, then that turns even to a more bigger problem. Instead of just kind of realizing like, maybe all I have to do is just maybe spend a night or two and do something that I don't really want to do, but it'll be easier. So this is where people start to avoid the problem that they know they need to get rid of and face. And this is where you're gonna just have to face it and it's not as complicated as you think. In order to move forward, you're gonna have to, there's gonna be confrontation. And that confrontation is with people, you're honest, but it's with Taurus, it's like, there is a good solution that will make everybody feel better if you, if you are understanding of other people's needs and under other people's values and honoring those values. Especially that's important while we are still in Saturn territory with Capricorn and with Pluto. So, you know, there's this, and Jupiter, right? And South Node. So there is this integrity line of just, you know, it's not like it's the worst things in the world, but it's like everybody's going to go the direction that they want. And that's not going to be easy for some people to understand. But it's just like, I think clearly about just understanding like, okay, there's going to be confrontation and that, you know, it's coming from a place of like, you're going to have to say what it is in your life that you want and you're going to have to do things 
in order to make those things to move forward. If you get stuck and you try to avoid doing those things or if you go backwards, right? It's like, I think that this is too complicated and I don't want to be here, so I don't want to deal with it. So sometimes people might be rebel in a weird way and not ever deal with the issue and then move on. It's like easier to move on, right? Like I'll, I use personal stories. Sometimes I look like I'm a horrible person, but you know, like there would always be, there was a couple jobs I had where it was just like, I just don't like this job. I don't want to be here. Instead of just going and telling the person like, Hey, this is when I was like 19 out of the military. Like, Hey, I, I want to quit. Like, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to quit. It would just be like, I just get in my car and piece the fuck out. You know what I mean? But then, you know, what does that do for the HR department and then the people there and then they're worried about me or whatever, right? You can't, this is a time where it's like simple. All you gotta do is just be like, hey, I don't wanna be here, bye. Like, then go. Like, instead of this whole entire, like, I'm just gonna peace out, you know what I mean? Like, oh, well, what, what, oh, what happened? Like, the integrity is just about showing up right now and being honest and knowing your values and needs and, and not being afraid to present those values and needs. Remember that Mercury is in Aquarius as well. So with Mercury in Aquarius, it's important for us to understand in conversation wise and, and communicate with people. Like we can't just avoid that whole situation. So th th this is going to be confrontation because Mars is going to square uh, Venus this week and Venus is going to be with Neptune. So this weekend, and, and so you're going to see it through the whole week, this buildup of Mars squaring Venus, there's a tension. Now, Mars Venus squares are always bring up, you know, positive stuff like it could bring out positive tension, love tension, um, in a sense of like there's a buildup of energy, a kind of cat and mouse, but also like a, you know, masculine feminine kind of work in their way through the mix. And then especially in signs like Sag with Mars and we got Venus exalted in Pisces, like this kind of magical adventure with Neptune there. But remember that, you know, that also brings up tensions of people are going to pick other stories in life, right? Mars is in Sag going, I see this belief I want. It's going to square Neptune this weekend on, on technically, I think it's late Sunday and then coming into Monday with Venus going to be on Neptune. So we're going to see a Mars square Venus Neptune conjunction. And, and so this is going to be like the entrance into the most magical doorways and then the exit of the most weirdest, craziest, creepy stories that we don't want to go into anymore. It's a little bit like Event Horizon, if you ever watched that movie in the 90s, you know, like, I'm not going on that ship. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so this is going to be a time for us to, re especially because we're in Aquarius, we want to talk about aliens. But it's weird that we have that new moon that's also in square to Uranus. So the new moon itself is also saying that we have to come into a place to where we, we do have to, if we're going to set the intention for this new month and this new cycle and this new, I would call it, especially because it's the Chinese New Year, the new decade. I mean, this is really us being like, all right, this is what the world is that I want it to look like. I know that I have to confront my value systems and own those and find a way to present the universe, present people, present the world with that. And it's not about being stubborn as much as it is, is about knowing your integrity of worth in yourself and allowing people to just understand that. And if some people don't, because there's people that are not, Mars square Venus is people trying to attack beautiful things, right? Because Venus is in Pisces with Neptune and it's about learning to be compassionate. So Mars, when it squares Neptune, it can get confused. Like, am I making the right choices in my life or am I going into something crazy? Well, if you know in your gut or if the signs are there from the universe and God and with Venus there, I think that it's like, you know, but I think if you doubt yourself and you have no belief and you're not listening to the signs or it feels like you're walking into an event horizon trap, it's a lot because that you know, maybe you're just driving without the, with the blinders on or you're not listening to your feelings or you're, you're in an escapism place because there's a lot of escapism that could come from this. But I think that that's why I'm trying to present people that it doesn't have to feel so escape E is if you confront the situations that you don't want to be in. Like if you don't want to be in something, you just say it and you deal with it. You don't keep putting it on the back burner. 
Because then that's when it comes to these crazy positions. And, you know, in all, in all aspects, or I guess in the best way to put a lot of the other energy that's going on this week, it's a time of asking yourself, are you trying to leave everything in your life or quit? Or are there just some things that need change and still maintaining the ship and the integrity of the ship and the direction you're going in your life? I think that this is where it's easy for people to just say, screw it, I'm just piecing out of everything. Even maybe your job, your career, your relationship, your home, like the whole nine yards. I think that's like, you need to know what you are still doing on a mission and that this Uranian energy in Taurus, this new moon in Aquarius is about shifting people, shifting things that don't make sense, that are not fixable, but maintaining the integrity of the direction of the path and your true feeling of your destiny that you're going. Now Mars square Venus as well brings up a lot of energy when it comes to just going for the things that make us feel good, especially with Neptune there. It's a little bit like seven of cups or something, but this is a moment to us to go deeply into the beliefs of deeper subconscious realms that are positive and also face and get rid of the beliefs that are downright negative or subconsciously sabotaging ourselves or not respecting the integrity of ourselves by us creating our own negative stories or our own negative subconscious pitfalls and owning that as an ego or an identity. So, you know, ego can of course be pushed off for some people as narcissism and, you know, blatant overly obsession over themselves, but there's also the ego that is the victim. The ego that is constantly under turmoil and constantly drowning. And this is, I think, what you're going to see both sides of people. You're going to see the ultimate victim and then you're going to see the ultimate, oh, uh, well, I can do this because I have to. And maybe that's the way to get out of the victim. But we got to be honest with that. And I think that we have to be clear in our understandings of we... We've been through a freaking lot. And this is a lot to help us. If we're going to use the ship analogy, it's like, do we really need this box right now on the boat? Like, I'm sure those seagulls over there can like sit on it. It's not like we're littering either, but you know what I mean? We're using old analogies from 500 years ago. Like, okay, like that needs to go. You know, there's like this extra weight and this weight are the things that we're not feeling magical about anymore. And even though we have to confront, there's a lot, of, everything's about conf confrontation this week as far as confronting, you know, subconscious things in the back of your soul that don't feel magical. Confronting people and situations and things that you feel like there's just no solution. And especially if you don't feel the, the worth or the value back as a person or those group of people, then... You know, this is not a time to just like own that victimhood of that situation. Like this is about liberating yourself out of those situations. So I think it's a really positive week. It could feel like a soap opera though, because we're dealing with a dark moon in Capricorn on Jupiter in the south node, right? So this is where, you know, people try to make choices or then they, they believe and then they, they might, you know, oh, I don't know if I should. And people come into a massive doubt here. And people could also be projecting weird stuff with Mars square Neptune, right? Like this is where you have to be centered and seeing your future, Aquarius, and see, with Mercury too, right? We're, we're able to see it. And we're also seeing as Mercury's coming up and Mars, right? Like Mercury and Mars are starting to get in a nice sextile. Like, there is something to say that we are clear if we see the future. And I think that this is a week to focus on your future and not let the craziness of the present that you're not happy with be too much. It's important to be in the now, but it's important right now 
to see, it's a, it reminds me of like, I mean, you know, I don't know, I guess it's another personal. I race jet skis, you know, and sometimes I'll be racing and look down and my, my jet ski will go beep, beep, and the gas is out. So there's a problem. I got to get more gas or I got to deal with this, but I'm also in the middle of the race. So it's not like I'm going to sit there and freak out about it. I still got to look ahead in the future and I'm in the moment and I know that beeper's buzzing, but at least I know I'm going to go confront that, but I still got to look in the future and know it's going to be okay and know where I'm going. So this is a moment where you have to continue to see forward in the future and, and constantly look down in your present and go, this is a problem, this is heavy, but I have a solution and keep moving towards that. Keep looking at that future and not getting caught up in the emotional soap opera drama series of what seems like extreme drama that really is more of ourselves playing victim or other people playing victim or other people, right? It's always with other people with Uranus, not you. But it is the sun and it is the moon, which are the personal energies that are squaring other people. So this is where tribes are not getting along. Of course, there's an impeachment of a president in the Senate going on right now. Of course, there's a time in the world where everybody's wondering whose team is what. Even here in America, like we have different states now that are doing different things than other states. I mean, this is just a time of not everybody's on the same Gosh, I'm turning, it, I'm turning the show into like a car show or something, but like, there's misfires, <laughs> you know what I mean, in the motor. Back in the day with carburetors, you had to do something called timing. Like if the timing was off on the rotor, on, on, on you know, like you would have to actually, with the wear, you'd have to actually like adjust the timing, right? To get the spark plugs to go right. So when your car would misfire and go, you know, it's all about, that cap and rotor, like you got a, a distributor cap, you got to shift that the right way and find the right timing. And then it's like, this is an adjustment period. And that's why, and, and for those that don't know cars or motors, like why do you think telescopes are ruled by Uranus? Why do you think Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius? It was found in the 1700s and we gave it to Aquarius because it was a piece of equipment to make adjustments to the understanding of reality. We weren't able to see past Saturn before until we had a telescope, and that's what found Uranus. So imagine whenever you've looked in a telescope or if you've ever looked in binoculars, you have to adjust, even on VR today, right? If somebody gives you a VR thing, you go, hold on a second, I gotta adjust the eye lenses in the right place. Or I gotta look, hold on, I gotta, yeah, oh, or even on your camera, have you ever noticed that? You, gotta, you can adjust it in your viewfinder. This is us adjusting our viewfinders and thinking it's so dramatic that when we look at it, it's blurry. It's like, take the time, make the adjustment, and not everybody's going to see it the same way. Whenever I give my camera to somebody, they got to adjust it. When I get it back, I don't freak out and go, oh my God, I can't see through this thing. It's like, all right, bam, let's go. So this is not, this does not have to be over dramatic, but it can be the most beautiful experience of our lives when it comes to dreams and new ways to move forward in our life new adventures, new energy all around, new moon in Aquarius, new Chinese New Year, the rat, the first one. You got to be smart now. You got to be figuring out. You got to be, you know what the rat rules? Being a politician, being a salesman. So you got to like, you know, I know I'm a rat. So I know people are looking at me like Radican from the Great Mouse Detective, but I, I am a little Radican-ish. But there is that whole... <laughs> The Leo rat, but th there is this. <laughs> sorry, radigan. You've got to take <laughs> the future, and you've got to just. It, it's simple. You could still be in the moment and be in the future at the same time. And the past, right now. If we're gonna end this before we go on the charts, are you really gonna let the past? Because what is Neptune? The past. So here's going to be Venus right on top of Neptune while Mars squares it. What is Mars doing? Get over that past. Mars is a warrior, especially in Sag. Let's use Brad Pitt for his example when he was in Troy, right? Like, he's screaming, like, get over the past, you know what I mean? And I know it's kind of harsh for Venus because it's exalted in Pisces and it's sensitive. It just wants to be, I like the past and Neptune loves the past. But there's something to say about a huge past situation here of life especially with Venus, projects, relationships, 
And value is just coming to an end, especially with this new moon that's squaring over to Uranus, a dark moon in Capricorn with Saturn and Pluto. There's definitely a major week of major endings in every element from Chinese New Year to everything that I just said. So, karmic endings, massive endings this week, but massive new beginnings. And you've got to see that future. Don't be afraid of it. You have to use the GPS. And even though that GPS, you might not know how to use it or whatever, but you don't want to go backwards right now. You don't want to go live back in your past because with the dark moon of Capricorn, over the south node, over Jupiter, over especially Saturn Pluto. You do not want to now that Saturn Pluto have moved forward and conjuncted already. This will be the first time since the 1518 time that the moon has been in Capricorn with a Saturn Pluto conjunction that has just finally initiated with Saturn in front of Pluto and Capricorn. You gotta remember that the last time Saturn was in this position in front of Pluto and Capricorn was 1518. And this will be the first time that the moon ever touches that since then. We're talking about 501 year and like one month. 501.1. So do, do not go backwards. Especially whenever we're dealing with Uranus in a hard aspect. Backwards never works. Only forward does, and too much endings, and too much closing. But that dark moon scares me, I'll be honest. Because this is where people want control. And this is dark control. And this is control because you're afraid to confront and face a better future. So, don't be afraid. And don't live in your past. There's too much trying to cut off the past. There's too much where if you're worried about what everybody thinks, because this is hard, Sun in Aquarius, Uranus in Taurus, it's like letting other people determine your value? Letting other people determine the way that you should be? Well, that never works. That's why the Sun's at detriment. Because you individually determine your own values and your own worth in your life not other people. That comes when it comes to other things in life, like awards and how you said your award thing. But even at that moment, it doesn't matter because it's you. Don't fall victim this week. Don't let the whole world determine your life. And more importantly, nobody understands you like you understand yourself. Actually, even better than that, God and you, together. That this isn't about everybody else's understandings. This is about you and God's understanding and how you can connect to the world, to the future, and find the people that see that too and just worry about that only. Let's look at the charts. <clears throat> Whoa, I got my, my uh, Tropic Mix Sprite from McDonald's DoorDash to me. Ah, it's like a, reminds me of like a, I don't remember being a kid having a sippy cup. I don't think I had a sippy cup, but I see kids with sippy cups now and I get it. <sighs> All right. Hope everyone's doing wonderful out there. Um, before we go in these charts, I'll just say this. Um, touch, touching a little bit on that Uranus stuff, uh, you know, I, I think it's hard. Again, I want to make this clear before we go into this. It's, it's, it's not as crazy as you might think. We're dealing with worries about what other people think about our own needs and wants in our life. And that's one of the main parts of this new moon. And it's going to continue for a month. So don't... And then it's continuing through a whole Chinese zodiac of the rat. Like, I'm going to use an example. And, and I, you know what? It's just a true thing. I'm a rat. The whole story of the rat is he worked with the ox. Or she, who knows. The rat worked with the ox. The ox was strong and could run fast and could push through anything. So the rat 
talked with the ox, and they're the only two animals that work together. The other animals didn't really work together. They worked together, they ran there. Of course, the rat jumped in front of the ox and won the race, just because it was the one giving the guidance. And there was a humbleness about the ox that really didn't care, because at least it had the rat to help it figure itself out how to get through to the, to the end of the race. But, you know, there's that notion of when you're in rat energy that, you know, other people, and I've gotten this projection on me all the time, like, oh, you're just like somebody who's just going to use the ox and jump off it. And I got accused of that recently. Ugh. And I was just like, oh, really? So I think that this is important to note that do you think that the emperor in the race would give the rat the first place position if it was that way? It wasn't that way. And the ox and the, and the rat are best friends. Usually if you look at the zodiac of Chinese, you don't see best friends like that. They work together. And so there's going to be a major time about learning to work together. But it's also the same time where it's like you, you really cannot worry about what everybody's perceptions of things are. All that you need to worry about is making the best for your life, moving in the direction with people and energies and, and, and tribe and, 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 and everything that is moving in a direction that really is truly the place that connects with you and connects with your vibe. And you know, when you connect a tribe and stuff, maybe you're the ox and maybe they're the rat. And maybe you're the rat at one moment and then they're the ox. Like there's a, there's a moment here for us all to really realize we all in life are sometimes where we're the smart one with the guide. And other times where it's like, hey, you guide me, but I got your back and I'm pushing this thing with all I got. And I think that we need to come from that place more because this is a time for us to realize if we're going to throw out energy on other people of how other people should be and other people should live because of our own value systems and throwing that out, it's going to cause the, these soap opera dramatic stories. And most of the time, especially because Neptune's involved with Venus, nobody even knows everybody's stuff. Like we don't know anybody, unless you're personal with people. And even when you're personal with people, we never really feel no matter how much you connect with somebody in life, you truly do not know how another person fully feels on every level in their experience in their shoes. You just don't. The only one you know about the most is yourself. Even if I don't have my own children, but I'm sure if I did, I could get, get it to the, to the millionth degree, but you know what? There'd still be that part where you, why did my kid just go do this? Like, I don't, you know what I mean? Like you can find the pattern psychologically, but you still can't be in the experience fully. So this is going to be a big test for everybody in their life collectively and individually the most for you not to worry about what other people think for yourself, but you not to worry about what other people are doing as well. All you got to start to do is now focus on your mission, your path with your tribe, your best friend, your best lover, your best everything, and move into the direction that you need to go into your life. Instead of looking around constantly for some sort of validation, because that's really, I think, what it's coming down to here is everybody's worried about what other people will think for a validation that means nothing. It reminds me of social media with followers. I don't care about my follower count. I really do not. So it's like, do we really judge people based on their follower counts? When you actually go into people's worlds, it's different. It doesn't matter. I don't look at anybody in my life by follower count. I don't look at any of my friends. My, I don't look at my mom and go, my, my mom's only at like, Whatever, <laughs> I don't even know. I don't know. I don't know. Do you, do you go to your mom and my, or your dad or do you go to your brother or do you go to your grand? My grandma is on Facebook, all right, and Instagram, and she's 94. Am I stressing about how much she, how many followers she has? Do you think my Oma stresses? And my Nana's on Facebook. I need to get my Nana, who's, who's uh, 90 on, uh, on Instagram, but. Um, do you think they're stressing about that shit? That's not where they're getting their validation from. They're getting their validation from the love of a phone call, the love of 
the people like my, my Nana, she, she plays bridge. She does a lot of things, you know what I mean? And then my Oma loves her family. And so she's got the family. So it's like, you know, simple, but validation right now outside of what you're doing is going to throw you off course because guess what? Even the good stuff or the bad stuff, this is a moment for you to just be like, I have to understand my values. So if you uh, are watching this on YouTube, this is where we are going to switch it over to the part where you're not going to be able to see the charts, unfortunately. But sign up for High Vibe and you can definitely watch it because I'm going to be showing you all some pictures and some cool stuff today. Uh, and you're not going to want to miss it. All right. So, but those here on High Vibe, here we go. Tuesday, January 21st. This is the time for Providence in a way. If you look at the slides right now, this is the Mayflower, 1620. Ironically enough, here in 2020, it's 400 years ago. September 6, 1620. So what's kind of crazy about this is you have to remember that this year in 2018, and especially here in 2019, was a major moment when it came to Saturn and Capricorn, sextile Neptune and Pisces. So right now we have Neptune and Pisces, it's home sign. And Neptune rules this spirituality. And why do you think spirituality, since Neptune came into Pisces in 2011, became huge? There's no irony that the prophecy of the Mayans in 2012, when Neptune was really in Pisces and really moving forward, became such a real deal. There's imagination with Neptune. But with Saturn and Capricorn, it's home sign. It rules ships, ironically enough. It rules destinations, it rules destiny, and it rules this moment in life where you feel called towards something. And we had the sextile all this year, and it's actually still in effect right now, but to be honest with you, it's already kind of moving off. So you've already been called to what you're supposed to do. If you're still searching for it, I just look back at what you already were told, because maybe you're just not happy with what the destiny is, because in the Pilgrim's case, they weren't happy that they had to leave their home in England because they were practicing a religious order that was more free. It was not not Catholicism. You know, the king of, or the, the Church of England came out, which is where we get the whole idea of leaving Catholicism and going more into Protestant aspects of Christianity or religious practices. And at this time, King James did not want it that way and, and was trying to go back to the old way and trying to bring back the old traditions and the only way for them to actually feel safe was to actually leave their homes and go to a new world that they had no idea what was there, which took risk, balls, and imagination. And there's something about life right now in your life where you can't feel guilty about, am, am I just going to stay here and just like, now I'm going to practice the religion or I'm going to practice this life that I don't agree with anymore? Instead of fighting... They just left and went to a new place. Now, I know we're in a world where everything's been explored, but is that really true is a big question, and I'm not going to answer that one for you. For me, I've always been, uh, since I am a dis, you know, descendant of the Mayflower and my family's in the Mayflower Society, one of the things in the Mayflower Society, it says, is to, to keep the integrity of the understanding of what the Mayflower represented is where we're at today and it is an interesting time right the sun here at one degrees and it's within a degree of the square to uranus so you can see uranus here right here at two degrees and 42 minutes and the sun squaring that uranus now this is definitely going to be what i'm talking about is that sun and uranus square being and, and it's a pivot point in people's lives and it could pivot you in ways that you're not ready for like ah, oh, this is crazy but okay as long as it's moving you forward, if it's moving you backwards, you know, it might blow up in your face, right? Like, but there's something about us being forced to move into the future. It's the sun in Aquarius. And we do have to pay attention to that. You know, I think it's really interesting because last year, in 2019, in January, Uranus was in Aries. 
And that was the last end of Capricorn sun to square Uranus and Aries. So, this is the first time ever since the 1930s that Uranus, and to the beginning of the 1940s, that Uranus is being squared by the sun in Aquarius while the Uranus is in Taurus. This is a whole new pivot point we've never experienced in our lives. Of course, the question comes up about money. The question comes up about self-worth. If these people are worth it, do these people validate? That's why I'm saying this is different. Wait, we've never experienced this before. Last year, we couldn't have because Uranus went back into Aries in 2018 at the beginning of 2019. And it wasn't until March that Uranus went into Taurus. 2018, Uranus went into Taurus May of 2018. So we've never experienced Sun and Aquarius square Uranus and Taurus. So Wednesday will be that. But Tuesday, we're here preparing for that. Venus at 10, it's getting really close here to um, Neptune here, 10 degrees and then 16. So Venus has moved to the second decan of Pisces here. So thing, it feels like things are really turning on right now. It just made nice trines over to the North Node here. So there's been a lot of like, choosing our emotional fate and visions with relationships and partners and so forth. And then, of course, we have Mars here at 12 degrees, which is starting to square Venus right now. So there's Mars, you know, there, and Venus is coming up towards the square to Mars. And Mars is in Sag with the moon at the Galactic Center as we are leaving on Tuesday, about ready for that moon to go dark in Capricorn. Um, and I think that it's very important to note that this is going to be some kind of stressful energy coming here into Wednesday and Thursday, but I think it's about how you have set yourself up with a positive knowing of where you want to go in your life, looking for the future, and knowing you're going to have to make some pivots. You're going to have to make some changes and to not stress because stress can become big time with anxiety or feeling like your nervous system is off a little bit, okay, or your nerves because Uranus deals with the nervous system. And with the sun, too, dealing with the heart, too, we could kind of feel like we're a little off in the body. We're dealing with nerves and the heart and blood. And we've never seen Uranus and Taurus like this, so it also deals with the throat. And so, interesting enough, there's that Chinese sickness thing that's going around, right? So, it's kind of interesting that it deals with that throat. And, and, you know, you could hear when people are sick and, and yada yada, like this is going to be some really weird stuff. I'm not predicting some gnarly stuff, but, you know, I'm just trying to tell people to like pay attention to what's going on with you physically and know that this is a very edgy moment. And that's why. And stop maybe freaking out and going, it's this, it's that. I got, you know, people could come into massive freakouts right now especially with Mercury and Aquarius too, in quincunx to that north node. So, you know, we know we must move into our destiny and it's an emotional situation, but here we are trying to find the most, you know, radical solutions to maybe even avoiding, you know, any discomfort in that new pivot. Well, that's not going to happen. <laughs> I mean, I think it's like, there's going to be a little bit of uncomfort here, and I think that that means that's okay. I mean, like the best things in life are always what feel a little bit uncomfortable. Like it's a little uncomfortable when you get a new job. It's a little uncomfortable when you move into a new relationship. It's a little uncomfortable. Even when you new, move into a new house, no matter how excited you are, there's that, you know, moment when you're so tired and you've moved everything in, you finally sit down. That, that's not a very comfortable moment. There's a, uh, okay. And then you're in a, the first night you're going to sleep there and da, 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 da. You think that's comfortable? I don't know anybody in, in my life that has ever told me, like, I'm feeling super comfortable my first night. It's usually after a week and you've moved in, you're like, fuck yeah, I fucking feel great, you know, but that first day. <laughs> so we're moving into better things and it's going to feel a little uncomfortable. And if you worry about what other people think and their opinions about whatever things are going to happen here, <laughs> Now you're adding more uncomfort into your life and more craziness. And I don't think anybody wants to have that in their life. So as we move on to Wednesday here, this is going to be where things get weird. That's because that moon is dark at seven degrees and it is going to be on that south node. 
It is also going to be conjuncting Jupiter. Now, Jupiter and Venus, which I forgot to bring up in the, in the, in the first part of the segment, is Venus and Jupiter making a nice sextile. So this is a lot of positive things that are trying to move forward in our life, relationship-wise and projects, while there's some that need to end. The moon in the south node here with Jupiter trying to have us make decisions emotionally that are tough to advance our life forward and we get the payback when we become an adult and we make a choice. So we have choices that we need to make and they're not easy sometimes, but this is with positive aspects with Venus. So it's like learning to not be afraid, learning to go with the flow and learning to keep focusing on the spiritual magic, keep focusing on the positive, keep focusing on the more beautiful things that you wanna create in your life and letting the past be the past. You know, if you're going to attach to the past, if you're going to attach to things at all this week, especially past-related things, it's going to implode. So the deeper things from the past that you know are over and you're still trying to either just relive it or re-bring it up or re-examine it or bring it into a place of possibility, <sighs> there's some major kabooms. And I think that a lot of the soap opera energy that's going to come this week is going to come from that vibe like man i really wanted to give it another shot but you know i don't know what happened like we finally talked and then kaboom and then this got brought up and that <laughs> definitely one of those times especially with dark moon and capricorn uh it's also interesting to notice with this dark moon that's coming in it will conjunct jupiter while it does sextile venus so there is something to say about a lot of new stories and old stories kind of together and that everybody's going to feel that in some way and saturn and pluto 23 23 although saturn now at 23 is definitely moving forward and ready to go to 24 degrees and pluto is now 23 uh, so pluto is at the stationary degree or where the shadow was that's where pluto went retrograde right so pluto is getting ready to come into new territory and come out of shadow here soon so we have a lot of major changes coming here in this new month of this new Aquarian month, major. And it's gonna be life changing because of the fact that Saturn Pluto conjunction just happened within a couple weeks ago. And now Pluto is about to come out of shadow. Saturn is out of shadow. Jupiter's out of shadow. Mercury's out of shadow. Venus is not in shadow. Neptune's in shadow. Chiron's in shadow. Uranus is in shadow. That's it. So. You know, there's a lot of forward movement right now. You, Mars is not in shadow either. So, you know, just know there's a lot of positives trying to come in. But the darkness of this moon is if you're going to try and use it for negative hopes over things that are from the past. Because it's connected with Venus. Because it's connected with Neptune. Because it's connected to the south node. Like, we got to dump we got to do a, like, a, like, a, like a trash recycle bin dump on your computer of those cached files or those background files that just no longer are serving us anymore in our life that are positive. Because on this Wednesday, the sun does exactly at two degrees, right, make that square to Uranus. But, and I wanted to wait for this for people on uh, this part of the program, but the sun sextiles Chiron. So... What does this mean? Well, why do you care about what other people think? It could definitely affect you because right now with Chiron in Aries, there is this notion of it being like there's this, you want things to look a certain way, but they don't ever end up looking that way. Does that make sense? Like they just don't ever look the way we think it seems. So, I think it's important for people to note that there's a healing aspect when you go, why am I so concerned about exactly how it's going to look? Why don't I get excited about the figuring out what it will look like by how it will look and being surprised? And maybe, I don't want to say the unknown, but there is a little bit about the unknown with Aquarius just as much as Pisces, but Pisces is much more of the mysteries of the universe unknown, where Uranus is trying to figure out the mysteries, where Neptune and Pisces just kind of is like, I don't really care, I just trust in this higher dimensional energy, and 
I understand a lot of it, but I also am not going to try and figure out God's puzzle completely. You know what I mean? Like, nobody really can. It's too vast of an area, too vast of space, spiritually. But there is something to say about this awesome energy of exciting things if you are not so concerned of exactly how it's always going to look. Nothing is going to look exactly the way that you think. You're dealing with Uranus energy, you're dealing with Chiron energy, and you're dealing with the Sun and Aquarius. So, But the detrimental part is wounded egos over what other people say about how they think that maybe you should be looking or you should be doing your life or when you're doing that and projecting that to other people, it just makes your ego look like a wounded loser, right? Like, you should be doing this and you need to look like that and blah, 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 blah. It's like, uh, it's not a fun person to hang out with. So that, that's going to be this whole thing about Wednesday. There's a lot of positive, but you don't want to take the darkness to the past and not worry about the outcomes and the looks and all that of how these new exciting pivots are taking place in life. Now, Thursday here, January 23rd, we're done with the Sun Square Uranus, which I think is a good thing um, because that pivot was definitely intense and it's a lot. But Saturn now is at 24 degrees. We're at a whole new, another degree. So Saturn and Pluto now are coming off and now Saturn is going to gain much more speed here, especially as it's coming to one degree of Aquarius here in March. Um, the other thing too is the moon is going to occult Saturn Pluto in the darkest part of its phase. So this is where things get dramatic the most. The only reason why I say that is because that moon Pluto Saturn it's going to be the first time in 500 years that Saturn is right on Pluto, but in front of it now, not on the other side, not behind it. So now we're dealing with the moon occulting Pluto, then Saturn. We've been dealing with for the last couple of years, the moon occulting Saturn, then Pluto. So now we're getting transformation and then building upon it, where we have been going through building upon it and then watching it needing to be killed and then rebirthed again. So it's almost like sandcastles that get destroyed every minute. <laughs> Where this actually, I think, is a positive in a way. It's like we can actually do this transformational thing of ending something to build something beautiful. Like, so it's almost like, I guess I can't use the sandcastle analogy, except that maybe it's more like, all right, I'm going to let the waves just kind of wash all this away. And then now I can build like this is a perfect new landscape for me to build upon opposed to spending your time on building something and then watching it all just like pshh. But the grip on control is a big deal. Very intensely here. So on Thursday, trying to control the situations, there could be major frustrations with, with the moon on top of Saturn and with Pluto because we have never in our lives been through this one, right here, ever, unless we lived in 1518. So, um, this is a hard one to interpret since, you know, it's very rare do you ever come into once in a lifetime vibes, once in many lifetime vibes, and that's what's going down here on Thursday as a dark moon. The first moon over Pluto and Saturn with Saturn in front of it and after the conjunction happens to be a dark moon. Not just like a trined moon, not like a full moon, not like an eclipse, but an actual dark moon. So this is where people can go dark. Maybe how they handle the pivots that take place or the wild energy that comes in. I don't know. Remember, it's an unpredictable week. And this is where Venus is at 12, so it's squaring Mars at 13. Like, this is pressure. But it also could be building some beautiful energies and coming into energies that are beautiful. But it also could be some major confrontation. But there's a lot of creative energy. There's a lot of uh, root chakra energy coming up. 
And so that's what we need to pay attention to here. And, and really, that's, that's a big part. Because um, everything else, you know, is kind of, I don't want to say everything, but everything is pretty much kind of operating now at this moment. You know, so, and preparing for these two bigger events, the new moon and Mars and Venus square. So when we move into Friday, which is going to be a glorious day, you should come to highvibe.tv and check out Spiritual Dance Music Live. But we have a new moon at four degrees. Now, very Iranian. And this new moon is going to happen with that square to Uranus, although it's post and, of course, is sextile to Lilith and Chiron. Kind of interesting. So I think that this is us doing some crazy stuff, moving into some new worlds, and there's a lot of healing that's going to be taking place. But maybe it might not be understood by people. Maybe it might not be understood even by yourself. But there is something to say about just kind of going with the wild ride a little bit and being excited. A moon in Aquarius, too, is detaching from emotion. We've just gone through heavy emotion with Saturn and Pluto, a frustration or stuff. This is doing something that's wild and different and unique. Like, oh, this is different. Like, okay. This is where destiny's taking me on a new course. Okay. I know I have my caboose. I know I have my, my, my ship and where I'm going. I'm just getting new sails and somebody came and tie-dyed this shit out of the boat. Okay, fuck it. Let's, <laughs> I, I, I thought that they were going to come and paint it like looking like a British, you know, ship or something, but they came in through and high vibe the shit out of it. Okay. But if you're going to be in control city from that dark moon prior the night before, like, oh, I do, you're tie dyeing the boat at night or you're making it look all like this. I want it to look like a fucking original captain blah, blah, blah shit. It's like, good luck with that life. People who have ego issues this week of it looking exactly the way they want to, it'll be so clear as a bell how they communicate that. And especially on other people or other things or it can be stupid things like a movie or a television show or a car that they see. You go, oh, look at what that guy did to his car. Like, look at that. It's like, gee, man. It's like, if you start hearing that, just be like, I'm not going to that. Or don't buy into that energy. Because this new moon's about setting the new intention of the year future. Now, this is the Chinese New Year. Okay? Remember, in China, it'll be on the 25th. So when you see all the stuff online, it's going to say January 25th, January 25th. But I'm talking to mainly Americans here. But for those Brits and those Australians and those in Europe, I will say it'll be the 25th for most of you all. Um, but for the Americans, Canadians, and everyone else here on the other side of the world, it is going to be on the 24th. Um, the other thing, too, is, you know, this whole Jupiter-Venus thing is still going on, the two benefics. So there's a really good aspect to this new moon, especially with relationships and projects. And, but there's a little confusion, but there also is like having to follow your intuition with it and follow what the signs are saying, because Neptune and Venus now are within three degrees. So Neptune is the ruler of Pisces, Venus is exalted, so these two love to be here. These are the two best planets to be in Pisces, period. No better planets. So, with them being aspected by Jupiter, which happens to not like Capricorn, but it's almost making this good aspect with the two benefics, and, and, or with, with, well, Venus is a benefic and Jupiter is a benefic, so, but the Neptune's kind of like, well, at least I got all this benefic energy, even if Jupiter's a Capricorn, it's still a good guy or good energy. Uncle Jupe's, you know, still there to do some Uncle Jupe shit. So this is positive, but Mars is the one throwing the tizzy, and it's belief-wise, and that's why when you get this new moon, square Uranus, right, of other people, and then you get Mars, which is very opinionated in, in Sagittarius and very adventurous and very explorative, like kind of wanting to be like, well, we're going to go magical. Why don't you try this? And why don't you try this? Or I believe you should do that. It's kind of somebody who, gosh, I had those friends in high school that would be like, you know, you get something, you're like, you, you should do that to it. You need to do that to it. What are you doing? It's like, is this yours? <laughs> no. So, you know, this, this is where we have to be a good human being and not try and cause a fight or not try and cause a stir by learning to disconnect from those kind of things and know your value of it. And, just, and, and I think it's about being wise now in the rat, like 
being a politician, right? It's like, ah, yeah, you know what? Yeah, maybe, you, you know what? That's a great idea. You know what? I'll talk to you. I gotta go, I gotta go to the bathroom real quick. And then, and then you already know that person's out on the phone. You know what? What are you doing, man? You know what I mean? It's like, okay. Ah, uh, the mind of a rat. So Mercury as well is an aspect to Mars during this new moon. So again, this is positive because Mercury's in Aquarius, Mars is in Sag, so there's a lot of, you know, like, like air and fire here and belief in the future. And we need to stay in that positive belief for the future. But Mer Mercury, Mars is also kind of giving the confidence to people to speak their energy with the Uranian energy and with, you know, the Chiron energy as well and with Venus and Neptune and Mars square, right? It could kind of bring up like people where it's like they'll use good, good energy to feel that they can say what they want and have the direction to say what they want, but they might be in attack mode, you know? So it's like belief opinionated road. This could also be over religious beliefs. This could also be over doubts. And you know what? I don't think that you need to prove yourself. That's Uranus and Taurus. Like either people see the vision, they see where you're going. They see how it all makes sense. This is where it's about understanding how a collective can work. You have to trust that people in that country with a nuclear bomb, guess what, are going to not blow everybody up. We have to trust here in America that we have the most nukes and we're going to be okay. Nobody's going to have human error. You probably don't think about that much. But that's the whole kind of thing is that the way we work in a collective is sometimes we got to throw it to other people and put trust in them. And we also cannot be so overhounded on, you need to all do that, and you need to do that, and you need to move that, and you need to do, it's like, whoa. You know, the government knows, they guess what they're doing, right? I don't know. At some point, you kind of have to just throw it up to God and just be like, well, okay. And that's where Mars and Sag might have a tough time, like, so, oh my gosh, like, nuclear bomb and all this stuff, and, you know, this is also where people are going to fight for their rights, or, but they're mainly more of about opinions. This is like an opinion battle. So, you know, like, we might see groups go out and force. There could be a massive weird event, not negative, just maybe more, you know, group-oriented event that might cause a really big stir that creates this, like, you know, loud voice in the world. But this new moon energy and the Chinese New Year and it's the rat and everything, right? And it's like, Listen to it, but at the same time go, is this, is this telling people what to do? And is there credibility to that? Because this is a really big salesman energy now with the Year of the Rat and with this energy can, can use it to sell anything for the gullible with Venus and Neptune there. It's not gullible if it's coming from spiritual truth and it's got signs and it's got compassion. If it doesn't have compassion, don't run with it. As we move out of the new moon into the weekend um, energy, this is where we are going to start to see Mars and Venus make their square. So here we have Venus at 14, Neptune at 16, and look at that Mars, 15, 14. So Mars this weekend is going to be squaring Venus. I mean, people are going to be making some moves this weekend into their lives making a lot of change, making a lot of new exciting worlds. The moon will conjunct Mercury while it's in the new moon phase and Mercury is sextiling Mars. So there's definitely a lot of environment changes, could even be possible home changes with the moon. Um, our emotions are shifting a lot of gears. Our emotions and our mind are coming into a new place. This new moon is with Mercury, so it's not exact, but it's close enough to where we're really starting to see a precedent of understanding how to fix things, or at least an understanding of what our future is going to look like. And I think a better understanding of where things can really go. So, but that Mars square Venus is like, you know, let's go make something good. Like Mars is kind of impatient and sad, wanting to expand and feel and experience Venus's exaltation and Neptune's dream. It's like somebody... I'm going to use virtual reality again. Like it's almost like it's, a, it's almost like a really pesky little person. Like put on that another world. I want to watch it right now. You know what I mean? Like okay, hold on. The computer's got to fucking load the motherfucker. 
<laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like when I do VR for people, it's like, all right, give me a second. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, like, you know what I mean? Like, or if like, you know, back in the day, right? If somebody wanted to watch a movie, like we didn't have Netflix, right? Back in the day, it's like throw in that other tape. It's like, hold on, I gotta push, I gotta rewind it, bro. I'm not like made a goal. I don't have a, a separate rewinder. Give me a second. I'm not Blockbuster here with multiple rewinders. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I'm not gonna, you, you know, so this is where it's like, People want to experience good things, but so much that it's like, it'll happen. Just hold, give me a second here. And that's the positive part of things. The negative part is people, you know, I think that you're going to see some people pull away the past stuff. The past stuff's going away. So, which, talk about rewind, right? Anybody trying to rewind is going to come into a, the tape deck blowing up or the tape breaking. That was one thing, you know, there were so many VHSs growing up, sometimes out of nowhere, you know, the rewinds were so fast, like it was ultra rewind. They break, and then you have to pull out the duct tape and put it together, and then it's never as strong, and then you have to do the tracking. And I don't want people to go through that. That's what past situations are gonna feel like, past relationships, especially with Venus and Neptune. Past, you know, dreams that didn't work out. Like, do you really want to be pushing that tracking button and watching all the on the screen and, and then it, no. So I think that Saturday's a pretty good day and I don't really see anything. I mean, that's the major thing I see, but overall, I think that's a really positive energy force. So um, as we come into Sunday here, oh, I'm, I have two Saturdays, so here's Sunday. Sunday is Mars square Venus exactly. So here we go and it's going to happen at 5.01 p.m. Pacific. So. The sun's going to come to six degrees here. It's four degrees off that Uranus. We got Saturn here, now exactly a degree off of Pluto, which I think is really positive. And then we have the moon in Pisces. So this is going to be really interesting. The new moon energy is over. We're totally in this new energy now. Here comes Mars at 16 degrees. Here comes Venus at 16.00. We're going to have the Mars-Venus square at 16.00. Now remember... And I didn't bring this up earlier, but we are now at the first quarter square of the Mars-Venus cycle. What do I mean by that? When Mars and Venus met in conjunction point and Venus started to pass Mars, was this summer when Venus and Mars were in Leo and moved into Virgo and conjuncted. Okay? Right by the star Regulus. So, this is also with the sun that was in Leo. It was during Leo and a Virgo, okay? And that, that was a very positive time because it was setting the intention of what we want in our lives to feel, to have in our reality. Well, guess what? Here's the first quarter square to see if you're going to pull it off or not. Are you going to do it or not? There's going to be a big aspect of like, are you going to do it? Are you going to move into that? Are you going to move into that energy? There's presentation showing up, Neptune. There's doorways opening with Venus and Neptune exactly conjunct during this moment. You cannot make this 2020 shit up. This is magic shit, okay? This is magic. And so, are you? Because if you look at Mars and Venus when they were here in Virgo, right? There's Mars and here's Venus, okay? They met. And now Venus went forward and Mars has been trailing. But remember, Venus has been going quick. And she's come all the way here to Pisces. And now Mars has made it here. So now they're at the first square point from the conjunction point, right? That's how this works. So what you seeded, and, you know, it's kind of crazy, but I have a trusty old, old days here. The date. September, yeah, so Mars, Venus. That was also with Mars and the Sun. Here's Mars, Venus right here. August 25th, yes, yeah, Sun. August 26th. August 24th. August 23rd. Let, let's give you guys a little look here. Um, this is kind of cool that I can just pull it up real quick, but yeah, here we are. Here was the approach and the ending of the old Mars-Venus cycle. All right. This is what I want to show. This is why you should be a member of High Vibe, because you can't see this if you're on YouTube. All right. 
There's the finishing of the Mars-Venus cycle, and it was August 23rd of 2019. So you might want to look at your Instagram and see what you were doing then, or your Facebook, whatever. But, um, let me this is black, okay. And the sun went into Virgo. Juno was at 29, Leo. There was a lot about moving into this new love and happiness into our life that we were setting these seeds of. And so that Mars-Venus conjunction that happened there, but that's right before. I'll show you here on the 24th. So it was the 24th here, boom. Wow, it's so funny seeing these because it's like old deep astrology, like going back into history and erasing what the astrologer did. Oh no, what was I looking at? Oh, that was moon opposed Jupiter. I remember this day. I was like, wow, this is going to be crazy. So you have to remember that the Mars-Venus conjunction, and we're going to go through it one more time with you because this is pretty intense, that Mars and Venus now are in their first quarter square. I'm teaching you all, for those that, you know, know astrology, but might not really, you know, be like, whoa, I need to know a little more. This is how deeper predicting elements happen, is knowing when was the last time that Venus and Mars conjuncted? Is this the three quarter square? Is this the first quarter square? So see that it was at four degrees, 407. Now, at the same time, it was Jupiter at 14, just came out of retrograde and was direct and was in opposition to the moon in Sag. I mean, sorry, in, um, in Gemini. And it was also at the time that Saturn was retrograding with the south node and not done yet. So we were all looking for this amazing, more better piece in our lives to actually be, actually, we were almost like desperate to have it more as like just functional in our lives, relationships, identity, a better life that was more functional. That's what these doorways are opening right now, this week. Because this is the last time that they met in a major aspect. They have not met in a major aspect since it was Mars and Libra and Venus and Sag when Jupiter was leaving Sag. That was pretty positive. So it's almost like the energies from December to now, like early December, late November, that was the sextile. Now this is the square. So the buildup of the stuff that's been going on since August 24th to November to now is where all this is coming towards. Now, when we go back to, <laughs> that looks like a weird thing. Uh, okay, so we come back to now, that's where Venus is at with the Mars square is, we'll do this in red, that's 16, and that's 16 with Neptune. So it, this, this is a little bit of a, uh, I guess you could say, oh, the best way to describe it would be a, um, I especially like how I can kind of do this and kind of fade it all around. It's, it's, it's a portal. Okay. And so it's a little hazy. It looks a little funky, but at the same time, it's, it's, it's Mars willing to open the door and being forced into it. And the moon's there in Pisces, which I think is going to be positive because it's so much lighter. Then even Aquarius, I mean, Aquarius kind of bugs out completely, but the moon's like, we are moving into a emotionally sensitive portal and really it's feeling it. And that's going to be a major moment for us in our lives. So it might not seem like it at the moment when you watch this early, but you're going to be realizing that. And maybe you are. I don't know. I don't, you know, but I, I can say that there is something about the pivots in life turning so quick here with this Uranus square, with this new moon in Aquarius, and, and things are coming in lightning fast. That's what Uranus is. That's what Aquarius is. Just whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. And in the background, sure, you're going to hear all over the place about Mars and Venus, but I guarantee you, you're not going to hear about portal to Neptune because of what happened in August and the, the sextile of when it happened at the end of November into December with Mars and Libra and Venus and Sag. That those two points have now met to this point to move you into this place. So there's something to say about the question on if this is really the door that you want to open or not. And the question of whether or not you're ready to experience this or do you think you're fanatical? Do you think you're an, a delusional freak? The last chart that we have is Monday. And on that Monday, the Mars-Venus square is over. 
So Venus now has moved on to 17 degrees. The moon is going to be with this, so we're going to get this Jupiter aspect to the moon. So it'll be a positive energy and good day, and it's coming over that portal, but that Mars energy. Ugh. 16 still. So it's still, it's now making the square to Neptune. And, and that's what really Monday is going to be. Continuing to move through this portal energy, and I'll give you a little bit more. Like, here we go. Like, here we go. Do, 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 do. Adding a little bit more color, yes. Oh, see, we paint here on Deep Astrology. Okay. I wish Kim was here. She, she would validate that this is worth doing. <laughs> she, taught, she taught me how to blend. So see this, this is going to be a, it looks a little portally. I think it needs a little bit more red there and my battery's about to die, but that's what's crazy about Monday. Okay. Is look at all that. Oh, it looks beautiful. That's what Mars is staring directly into. Are you going to venture into this or do you think you're crazy? And that's why you can't worry about other people, especially through this whole month, because the new moon is in square to Uranus when it happens, and you can't worry about what other people think, and you can't get too worried about the opinion, and, and that's the whole thing about Uranus and Aquarius itself, and especially affecting your self-worth. But as we move on, Mercury at 19, it's moving on, and you know, it's not really doing much, to be honest with you. It is making a trine to Juno um, at 21, but that's not exact. We'll be talking about that when we do Deep Astrology next week. And if you watch the dailies, of course. But really, I think that we end the week pretty, pretty good. And I think that we end up in a whole new world. Like, whoa. And, and, but there's still some questions about the portal. And you're going to have to really go in or not. And you also have to kind of, you know, in yourself determine, is this really what I want the story of my life to look like? But there is a, a mystery and something spiritually calling us towards it. That's, you got to remember that, all of our cups are pretty much empty after all this Capricorn stuff, with, especially when you have K2 there, because when you have the South Node there, it's like a desert. So we're all chapped lips, don't have a lot of, we haven't had any water. It's cold, it's dry. And there's something to say about this being a moment for us to truly allow ourselves to fill our cups up, to drink that water, to drink that nourishment of this amazing doorway, of this amazing new adventure, of this amazing new magical story. And even though you're going to have to be very careful to see if it's crazy or not, I think that that's determined on, does it feel guided by spirit? Is it spiritual? Is it positive and it's opening up a door to something that maybe you have an insecurity about? then I think it's good. But if you're going to be in control city and be like, I don't want to deal with insecurities. I don't want to deal with, you know, my, 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 I'm the, mm, 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 like, I'm fucking too good for this shit. And I'm just going to continue to live in the desert. <laughs> Have fun out there with Saturn and Pluto. They ain't going to give you, and they're slow, right? They're slow. They don't, they, they're not going to, they might be promising you water, but they are still going to have you with the chain gang out there and, you know, Oh, you'll get water soon. Give him water when he's just about to die. <laughs> That's Saturn and Pluto and Capricorn. Like, like literally the last minute before he's going to die. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would take some of these portals here this week, people, especially this Mars, Neptune, Venus one. Um, but not portals of the past because that leads back to the desert again. So might not be the actual desert that you were the chain gang on, but it's almost like sliding into an alternate reality where it's like, I've been here before and, oh, it's like playing a video game and like playing level one again. Like, ah, no, <laughs> I do not want to restart this game. I don't know why virtual reality and video games come up, but might, there might be something interesting about that this week that comes up. Anyway, that's this deep astrology. Uh, if you want to make it to SDM, spiritual dance music for the new moon and the Chinese new uh, year celebration that we're having here at High Vibe TV Studios, get the tickets now at highvibe.tv. You can click up at the top SDM tickets. And of course, I have my awesome talk, which is all about 
2020 and what is coming up. It's an hour and a half long lecture video that I've cut down for everybody, but it's the whole entire lecture with the PowerPoint presentation, with the live audience that I did. It's an, one of the best talks I've ever done. It is on highvibe.tv right now to purchase under the paid video section. I want to thank you everybody for being a part of High Vibe. We love you all very much. And if you are on YouTube, please subscribe if you want to get this other part of the video. And of course, to watch what I do with the charts and so forth. And to get my daily video horoscopes, my sunshine horoscopes for the week and more. Check it out now at highvibe.tv or our apps at any of the app stores. Thanks so much for your support. Truly appreciate it. And we'll see you on the next Deep Astrology.